So what we're looking at is what causes changes in groundwater so or groundwater level, and that might be subsidence causing it to be close to the surface, it might be um, sea level rise, climate change, budget, water budgets, it might be leaky pipes, it might be pipes that are actually taking water away. And so then, so what, what that affects the groundwater and what does that affect? It might affect liquefaction potential and what effect does that have on various other things. So we're actually working very hard to answer a whole lot of those sorts of questions. Getting communities to understand um, what the, uh, their underground assets are, what it means to them, and what, what, what do they need to think about in the event that uh, an event should occur, such as an earthquake sequence at Christchurch, what, how do they deal with that? Um, what are the economic consequences? Who's going to pay? How is it going to be paid for? How resilient do they want their infrastructure to be? It very much starts with the hazard, the performance of the land. Then there's a box in the middle, which is the infrastructure networks. And there's several boxes, so that tears out to the end of the pen. Then gets right down to the community, if you like. And there's levels of service in the middle, but there's land use planning, sort of off to one side. Um, and then on the other side, there's some of the management tools. Um, how resilient is an organisation, the economic decision making. So. We've already got development in some pretty inappropriate areas with sea level rise, but we have some areas out east, northeast, which are vulnerable to um, increasing sea level rise on top of what we've already got with the earthquakes. Um, but the report released by the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment um, last week, Rob Bell's sort of putting a two metre sea level rise um, estimate for greenfield sites so that the standard for building will be a lot more elevated than it is for existing development and I think so in Christchurch our vulnerable areas between the two and the three metre contour um, for the next hundred years or so so we'll be focusing in on that. We're a consortium really of about 35 researchers from right across New Zealand who are all passionate about making organisations more resilient to times of crisis. As part of our research we've developed a tool for identifying or for diagnosing really how resilient an organisation is likely to be in times of crisis. Um, we the City Council, uh, I work in uh, service order. Uh, and um, this afternoon I was just going to float in front of you the sort of um, strategic castles that we're, we've really got in the Lower Haven. Post earthquake uh, recovery via skirt uh, um, really only deals with horizontal infrastructure uh, and not with open waterways and so on and so on. So it be left very much to, to the City Council to uh, look at the rivers and uh, open channels and so on. At the end of 2011, uh, we released a report based on a short-term um, uh, natural hazards platform um, uh, project focusing on the perfection impacts on pipe, on pipe networks, navigating and understanding, um, particularly for the uh, potable water network, on the major patterns of damage through the uh, Canterbury earthquake sequence. The major contribution from that work at the end of 2011 was the production of this map, which is the uh, liquefaction resistance index map. The production of this map was in response to requests from the Christchurch City Council to help guide their thinking around redesign and, 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 uh, of the plot, particularly the potable water supply, but also deeper pipes and the wastewater. The aim of Green Climate Solutions is to develop strategies to improve uh, the resilience of regions, cities and businesses uh, to better cope uh, with uh, climate change in the future. Accelerated collaboration process, which is a way of accelerating change in cities, which at the moment can be very slow, um, mainly because there's so many different actors um, having to work together who've all got different drivers, all got different funding streams, um, all got different priorities and time frames. Um, so, working with Peterborough City Council, we developed the Peterborough model. Um, I'm exploring the study DHV, IBM were involved, also local environmental consultants. And uh, it was a methodology for aligning data from multiple organisations, um, pulling together that data to create an evidence based visual model of a place. I uh, was mentioning sort of geographic information systems and um, community engagement, it's very much this process that we've used in keeping it 
very a simple way of um, sharing data and information about all different types of city infrastructure issues. So, for example, does the mayor really understand where the city's water and energy come from and how the interactions um, affect decision making for planning? The work that's underway is all great, it all has to fit. Um, but where we need to kind of mature the greater picture is both in the ability to figure out where are our gaps in infrastructure resilience and, and also just fine tune. Where much of our thinking has advanced to in terms of how you really test out infrastructure resilience is to work from bottom up and get communities to really be asking the questions. And so you'll see us coming out over the next two or three months with what are the questions businesses should be asking of all their infrastructure providers at the same time?